week, we've got an exciting show for you. It's Let's Talk Tobago meets Little Tobago. This is an episode you don't want to miss. Taking us out on this 15 to 20 minute boat ride is Frank's Glass Bottom Boat and Birding Tours. Little Tobago was put on the map because of Sir David Attenborough and his documentary entitled Trials of Life. This documentary highlighted the frigate birds attacking the tropic birds for their catch of the day. Let's Talk Tobago starts now. In our top stories, we take you to the Public Health Symposium, a look at National Emergency Exercise Day 2016, and later, insight on the resume writing and interview challenge. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. The journey to Little Tobago starts from right here at Blue Waters Inn in Speyside. Tourists and locals are taken to the jetty where they are introduced to the source of their adventure, Frank's Glass Bottom Boat. Our first story takes us to the Public Health Symposium where preventative measures against communicable diseases were discussed. Here are the details in this story. There are still no reported cases of the H1N1 influenza and Zika viruses in Tobago, but education is critical to minimizing the risk of an outbreak. Besides the pamphlets, posters and media advisories on the diseases, people from various sectors got in-depth data on these viruses, how they affect populations and the precautionary and medical treatments that are available. This at a public health symposium entitled A Targeted Response Against H1N1, Swine Flu and Zika Viruses. You, you always benefit from awareness because you can never do any intervention or make any intervention unless you're aware. So the first part is always education. Once we're educated, then we could better um, tackle an issue. The symposium was hosted by the Division of Health and Social Services under the University of the West Indies. In addition to facilitating events like these, the County Medical Officer of Health continuously collects data about communicable diseases. We're continuing our surveillance for, for flu, surveillance for respiratory-like illnesses, influenza-like illnesses. So that's the other side of it, and that's something that we do on a weekly basis. We have weekly surveillance team meetings to update ourselves on the events, the increase of cases, decrease of cases, who these cases are. So that's the... And then we... we compile all of that into a report form that's submitted to the decision makers so they're also kept abreast. The CMOH advocates that people practice the preventative measures that they learn at such health conferences. Cleanliness really pertaining to hand washing and then covering your cough, covering into your sleeves, uh, sneezing into your uh, sleeves, coughing into your sleeves as opposed to into your hands and then containing. If you feel you're not well and you think it could be the flu, then you seek care and then either you given by the doctor permission to stay home. So those are the three C's and that's really where we're trying to get that message across for people to practice these three C's. The division and the CMOH will continue to share information with the public on these diseases and to train healthcare workers in an effort to deal with any potential epidemic. I'm Omadar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Wordsworth Frank was the first tour operator on the leeward side of the island. His love for marine life and the environment inspired him to start this touring business in 1922. And speaking of business, the Tobago House of Assembly is making it their priority to ensure the island's development priorities are achieved. The United Nations will be helping the Tobago House of Assembly enhance its data capacity. This will improve the Assembly's ability to formulate policies. The agreement was made after a meeting between the two organizations to further develop their relationship. We need to enhance the data capacity to really understand how we make better policy making on the basis of evidence. 
and definitely the UN stands ready to support the THA on that area. But the strategy is aligned with the THA's Comprehensive Economic Development Plan, which fits into the United Nations Goal of Sustainable Development. We know that the country, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, the economic situation is very challenging. And this is really a moment where the UN can step up uh, its cooperation and collaboration in the interests of sustainable development. The partnership will now move ahead with a plan of action. The United Nations will visit Tobago annually and meet with the Assembly to discuss its progress. We've made a commitment, a number of commitments. One commitment is to meet on an annual basis so that we can do the evaluation and, of course, reprioritize, etc. And two, to keep the Tobago link with the agencies operational in the period between one meeting and the next. So that obviously you're going to find that people would be you know, exchanging operation of information, but most importantly, ensuring that the relationship doesn't end after today. The Assembly is seeking to develop its relationship with the United Nations to the benefit of Tobago. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Frank's glass bottom boat and birding tours do guided tours of the rainforest, waterfalls, the Angel Reef and the Japanese Garden. So a new initiative aimed at addressing the quality of what is offered in the accommodation sector goes beyond cosmetic quick fixes. It will encourage local hotels and guest house owners to elevate the physical standards of their establishments. More details in this story. Owners of hotel accommodations in Tobago can improve the quality of their properties through a new initiative, the Tourism Accommodation Upgrade Project. Through the program, owners will be reimbursed 20 to 25 percent of the cost of improvement works done on the tourism accommodation, up to a maximum of $75,000 for one to five rooms and up to $750,000 for six to 150 rooms. I have to do a complete renovation. I'm repainting, I have to change all the AC units, I have to remodel the rooms, I have to remodel the fencing, I have to remodel the grounds. And this initiative could not come at a more opportune time. I think it's great and it's going to help me to complete that, that, those exercises. I think it's fantastic. Although this will help to develop the quality of the room stuck on the island, property owners are being urged to develop partnerships with other tourism stakeholders, something that they have already started. We have guided tours um, from many of the cruise ships and it gives them an opportunity to hear a bit about the history of, of Tobago, a bit about the history of Plymouth, um, a bit of the history of our establishment and what we do for conservation. All approved and registered properties operating for more than four years have been encouraged to maximize the benefits of the Tourism Accommodation Upgrade Project. At Velocimo Boutique Hotel, I'm Juliet James from the Division of Tourism and the Transportation, reporting for Let's Soak Tobago. On the other side of the break, National Emergency Exercise Day. Stay with us. Let's Soak Tobago will be right back. Going to Barbados? Why continue to pay high prices when you can get there for only U.S. $231.95, all taxes included? Yes, you heard right. You can now travel to Barbados from Tobago for a mere U.S. $231.95 on Gold's weekly service. So if you're going to Barbados for business, the beach, crop over, or attending university, stop wasting your money on those other high-priced airlines and get there for a fraction of the cost. To book, just log on to www.vogue.com. Google.com.br. Barbados just got closer. Before the establishment of Little Tobago as an island, it was owned by Englishman Sir William Ingram. In 1912, he brought 47 birds of paradise to Little Tobago as they were collected by hunters for their feathers on the island of Papua New Guinea. However, the birds of paradise were destroyed by the great hurricane Flora in 1963. Now, preparation for all types of natural disasters is important for the preservation of lives. Tobago, in joining the other Caribbean countries, is testing the strength of its response capabilities. We bring you the highlights in this story. Southwest Tobago is a high population area. That's because it has a relatively flat landscape, 
which means that it attracts a lot more businesses, homes and the services that make up communities. But it also means that this region is prone to destruction by a tsunami which is triggered by a submarine earthquake. That's why the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, is focusing on ensuring that people in these communities are ready to hear this. We have received word that there is a tsunami and therefore you need to be prepared to evacuate Move inland immediately. Move inland and go to high ground. This year, the disaster response drill is titled Exercise Turbulence. It's an event that's carried out as part of the National Emergency Exercise Day need. It's done annually to ensure that civilians and responders, such as TEMA, are prepared for tsunami disaster, similar to the one that hit Japan in 2011. It's critical that the citizenry understand how important this is to them. So one is from the angle of disaster preparedness in the ensuring that we build a culture among our stakeholders and also the citizenry to understand that we need to move and elevate our levels of disaster preparedness towards disaster risk reduction in keeping with the Sendai framework for action. This year, the focus will be ensuring that people make greater use of technology in preparing for and responding to a possible natural disaster. We want to extend the early warning system to our phones, whereby the average man in the street, average citizen, whether visitor or otherwise, will be able, once they download Tima Virtual Vision, we will extend the early warning system to those phones so people can hear them wherever they are. It's hoped that more people will get on board and prepare disaster plans for their workplaces and homes. Following this exercise, emergency agencies such as TEMA, the Health and the Protective Services will get together and assess areas that need improvement. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Sir William died in 1925, making room for his son Sir Robert Ingram to inherit this island. After living there by himself for two and a half years, he donated the island to the government of Trinidad and Tobago in 1928 on the promise that the island be maintained as a bird sanctuary. So we step away from a moment in history in this next story and direct our attention to sports. Work hard and play even harder. Nominations are now open for the Tobago House of Assembly's Sports Award and you are a part of the voting process to nominate your favorite athletes, sports club, coaches and many more. Here's how you can participate. It's that time again, the time to recognize Tobago's top athletes, coaches, administrators and clubs for their hard work in the past year. Nominations are now open for the Tobago House of Assembly's Sports Awards. So it's your chance to have a say on the island's top sport performers. Keeping as much as we could have with the 2014 award period, which would have been held in 2015, the categories we have, have are the THA Sportman of the Year, the THA Sportwoman of the Year, Sporting Icon of the Year, Club of the Year, Power at League of the Year. This year we are doing a special recognition reward that is an internal, again guided by the awards committee, where we look for a group or groups that may not have been a part of what we have listed here and afford a, a special award. There will also be awards for Primary School Male and Female Athlete of the Year, Secondary School Male and Female Athlete of the Year, Student Athlete of the Year, Male and Female, Sports Administrator of the Year, Coach of the Year, Sporting Official of the Year, and the Sports Media Personality of the Year. We at the division need to understand that you put in a lot of time into your efforts, time and efforts into your accomplishments. 
And because of that, an opportunity like this gives us, as part of the THA, an opportunity to recognize your performances, to recognize your contributions, and more importantly, for Tobago and the larger community of Trinidad and Tobago to know who you are. Far too often we hear about you after you are Olympic medalist. The deadline for nominations is March 24, 2016. Nomination forms can be collected at the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. The THA Sports Awards will be held on April 28, 2016. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The main highlight of Little Tobago are the pelagic seabirds. These seasonal birds visit the island from October to April. However, the peak of their nesting season is from January to February. Next, we give you details on a program which had over 200 graduates since its launch last year. Let's take a look at this story. To most people using social media applications like Skype, Facebook and YouTube and sending emails is an everyday experience. But it's a source of pride for these elderly graduates who completed the third cycle of the Senior Citizens Computer Literacy Program. Carlisle Jordan, one of the 63 students in the recently concluded six weeks course, shares his experience. The program content was well planned, but it identified the critical areas that the elder people would like to do. We stop writing long letters. So what do you do? It's an email. And you didn't send a grandchild for a month, you go on Skype. And you see them grow. And it's really fitted into to, to our living our life. The graduates now know the different parts of a computer. They can use the internet for research or just browsing and create documents with Microsoft Word. They were applauded for their courage in seeking to learn more about the technology. You will have gained lasting benefits and insights and technological skills. And the applications that were taught enhance your ability to communicate one with the other, both locally and abroad. The program is an initiative of the Scarborough Library Facility. It's part of the thrust to create an all-inclusive learning environment at the library. The rationale for hosting a senior citizen's computer literacy program is hinged on the expressed interests of the, of the members of that community, as well as two of the guiding principles of the International Federation of the Library Association, which includes facilitating the development of information and computer literacy skills, and supporting and participating in literacy activities and programs for all age groups. Seniors are already signing up for the fourth cycle, which will begin in May. I'm Omadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, we take on the resume writing and interview challenges. See you on the other side of the break. Hey, why don't you step into the Scarborough Library facility? It has all the knowledge of our land, people and heritage that you just won't find online. The Scarborough Library Facility is now open. Tobago Library Services. Information inspires innovation. Visitors of Little Tobago do not hike the entire island. They hike the main trail. There are no predators and no hunting on this island regardless if the hunting season is open. This is to ensure the safety of the birds on the island. Now, do you recall the workshop facilitated by the YES program to help unemployed CSEC and CAPE graduates? If the answer is no, then here's Crystal George to jog your memory. It's true, a first impression can last a lifetime. That's why having a good resume is crucial when you're applying for a job. Your resume has to capture your potential employer's attention. It's the you they see first and determines whether you get a shot at an interview. The Youth Energize for Success CS program put on by the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development is helping young job seekers show prospective employers their true potential through the resume writing and interview challenge. 
the problem that exists is that these, these students do not know how to do a proper presentation of a resume and also an interview. So we decided to open them up to a new scope of what professionalism and life is really all about. How you are going to approach resume writing, how you're going to approach interview skills, how you are going to make your mark in society as a young professional. And in Tobago, we try to strive in helping youths develop. So you've gotten past the first hurdle and it's time for the interview. Remember, in an interview, it has everything to do with you. You are coming to an interview to sell yourself, but you cannot allow your nervousness to take the forefront. You have to appear to be confident, and when you do that, then you yourself will be able to do better and you will not get a second chance to make a first impression. 46 teens from eight high schools in Tobago participated in the workshop. Here's what the students had to say about the experience. Enlightening. Opened my eyes about a lot of different things that I've been taking for granted. Things I need to brush up on. Things that I need to pay attention to. And help me to understand myself better because they asked questions that I wasn't expecting. I had to do some introspection. The experience was excellent. I learned how to be a better businessman and how to go about in my everyday studies I climbing the corporate ladder. It teaches you how to sign up for a job, what procedures it takes to do, what the procedures you need to do to get a job. It teaches you basically everything. Cassie Sobers of Bishops High School came out on top in the interview challenge with McKaylee Henry of Signal Hill Secondary School 2nd and Goodwood High School's K.J. Hamilton third. Ms. Sobers, the most outstanding student received a paid internship under the Yes Summer Internship Program scheduled for July to August 2016. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. There were two houses on this island, both belonging to Sir Ingram, one being his house and the other his guest house, which were both destroyed in 1963 by Hurricane Flora. The government rebuilt one house, which was used to house the custodian living on the island. The Tobago Annual Fishing Tournament is a two-day competition which has been around for more than a decade. This year in particular, the organizers decided to take it up a notch, and this is what they came up with. Cavalli, red snapper, and tuna. These are just three of the nine species of fish that earn points for competitors in the annual Tobago Commercial Fishing Tournament. But this year, points will also be awarded for record-keeping, hygiene, and proper safety practices at sea. These categories will be judged on three random periods before the two-day competition. The restructuring will increase the transparency of the tournament among the competitors. We want it to, be ens to ensure that it was bona fide fishers of Tobago that would really qualify and would be the best fisherman in Tobago. How does it look for a best fisherman that just fishes for two days? And maybe by luck, they would get the you know, most points. So this is one of the things too, we try to eliminate. The new categories will also ensure competitors follow accepted fishing practices and enhance their entrepreneurial skills. The random judging would be would entail also record keeping. That is very important because we want to ensure that each fisher treat themselves as or see themselves as business people. And as, as a businessman, you're supposed to take record. So record keeping is very important in this respect too. The competition is in keeping with the objectives of the THA's Comprehensive Economic Development Plan 2.0, as well as the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment's 2015 to 2020 Strategic Plan. We have to, to show that we recognize the people who are contributing to the welfare in terms of product production of food. So what this will show is that 
we still have a lot of fishers out there who are fishing and bringing good quality fish for Tobagonians. The random judging will start in March and end one day before the two-day tournament, which is scheduled to take place on the 22nd and 23rd of June. I'm Umudara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Behind me is the main view. This is where David Attenborough filmed his documentary. From here you can see St. Giles, the island which separates the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. It's also home to the largest colony of frigate birds around Trinidad and Tobago. The main highlight at this view is seeing the frigate birds attack the tropic birds for their catch of the day. In this next story, the Tobago House of Assembly sent a group of people to the Ottawa Wine and Food Festival last day October to display their talents, arts and fine cuisine. Here are the highlights. The Ottawa Wine and Food Festival provides a platform for showcasing fine dining as well as talents in the arts. Last October, the THA was represented by a contingent at the prestigious event. It gave a local chef a chance to present a taste of Tobago. The island's culture was also on display with traditional dancing and drumming. As a part of the Wine and Food Festival in October 2015, the, at the request of the Canadian Embassy, the Tobago House of Assembly would have uh, sent a contingent comprising of a chef from the Tobago Hospitality um, Institute and also a uh, group, the Mason Hall folk performers, who would have gone there to share the exquisite culture of Tobago through the culinary aspect and also the rich um, music and dances that we are well known for. The contingent was also recognized for its contribution at the festival. For the participants, it was an opportunity not to only showcase Tobago, but also for a cultural exchange. We really appreciated the opportunity to go to Ottawa, to the Wine and Food Festival in 2015, to show the culture of Trinidad and Tobago, more so the culture of Tobago. On behalf of the members of the Mason Hall Village Council Folk Performers, to say thank you to the Tobago House of Assembly, by extension the Division of Community Development and Culture, and the members of the association in Canada. It was indeed, indeed, indeed a great pleasure serving my food, my talent to the people of Ottawa. It was well appreciated by all. It's an experience the participants will savor for some time to come. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. It's Have Your Say time, and we want to hear some of your creative solutions to our question this week. We asked, what is your role as a consumer? Now let's take a look at what some of you had to say. I try my best to keep it local, because I grew up with local. You know, grew up with nothing like no, from no outside world and no kind of thing to sell over. I expect good things to happen between me and the tellers. I just buy in the grocery to purchase things. Prices are high there, but we need them. You must eat. And when you go to a supermarket, you look for nice things to eat. So you buy nice things. As always, we thank you for watching. Email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week.